Welcome to the Protoss Podcast. Today's date is Friday the 9th of July and you're listening to a weekly roundup of the most important stories from the past week as reported by us. This week we covered news of Decentraland's upcoming Ethereum-powered music festival, Binance's island-hopping history, as regulators keep pushing the crypto exchange away, and the last meow for Catcoin as China's government keeps up their crackdown on crypto. But first... This week began with scandal hit esports collective FaZe Clan and the news that a number of its members are in trouble for allegedly pumping and dumping a dodgy charity crypto called Save the Kids. FaZe Clan, which is most associated with games Counter-Strike and Call of Duty, has fired member FaZe K, real name Fraser Katari, and suspended three more members, Jarvis, Nikan and Tico, until further notice. Prominent YouTuber Ricegum also joined the FaZe Clan members in advertising the Save the Kids project. Together, they showcased the charity Crypto to a combined 6.3 million Twitter followers. The sacking and suspension started after an investigation by YouTuber CoffeeZilla. He produced a 40-minute video about the scam in which he tracks the FaZe Clanners' Binance wallets and links K to Save the Kids developer. Big takeaways from CoffeeZilla's investigation include Jarvis selling two-thirds of his Save the Kids stash, Nikan offloading around a third, and K making $30,000 by dumping six billion kids tokens, each and every one, within the first few days after launch. FaZe Clan influencers had claimed the phony crypto would change lives and do a lot of good, until of course the rug was pulled from beneath everyone's feet. The defunct website claimed that 3% of all token transactions would be split between Save the Kids and existing holders, with the rest locked in the smart contract, echoing similar crypto Ponzi games such as SafeMoon and Ethereum Max. The site also promised potential investors that a so-called anti-whale function in the code would prevent huge sell-offs on listing. However, CoffeeZilla discovered the token's developer changed its code just before launch. The day before, 1 billion tokens were placed on Binance chain decentralized exchange PancakeSwap. The dev slashed the 24-hour embargo to just five minutes. From a recorded Discord chat with a dev, CoffeeZilla found that the decision came from a group chat with several social media influencers. The dev said he was, quote, just following orders when they allowed the esports influencers to immediately dump their tokens. Next up, have you got your tickets for the world's first Ethereum-powered music and arts festival set to take place inside Decentraland this weekend? The gig is called To The Moon, and it's a collaboration between NFT collectives Illumino and Bear NFT, while marketplace Known Origin is offering up its slice of the Decentraland metaverse as the venue. Launched back in 2017, Decentraland is crypto's second life, where users can experience the virtual world through a customizable avatar. This Sunday, beginning at 8pm UTC, users will be able to jam to musical performances from artists Win & Woo, Autograph, SN, BRN, UK and Dr. Fresh. Special NFTs are also on offer. A sort of digital canapé, if you will. We thought we'd scout out the venue ahead of the event, but Unknown Origins Decentraland HQ was deserted when we visited. NBC had reported that in March, more than 10,000 people were logging into Decentraland, but Protoss had to search high and low before we eventually found two users hanging out in the Wonder Mine. Stony Eye and Night Terror, based in Moscow and Long Beach City respectively, met at a recent Decentraland NFT event. Night Terror, who says they're fairly new to Decentraland, explained how the world is fairly quiet most of the time, but gets pretty packed during events. Stony Eye is a DJ in both the real and virtual worlds and has played sets to Decentraland crowds. They told us that 250 people had attended their last event, at least that's how many claimed a proof of attendance protocol, which is a blockchain badge that can be collected at certain crypto events. Stony Eye explained that people just dance and talk while taking shots on mic. Stony clarified that although bars exist in Decentraland, avatars can't currently drink. However, you can go to Frankie's Tavern to buy a blunt for your virtual self. For now, though, day-to-day Decentraland activities are limited to mining, playing games and exploring NFT galleries. The project boasts its native ERC-20 token manner where it allows businesses and individuals to buy NFTs representing virtual real estate and in-game items. The real estate is a very real emerging economy within Decentraland. Decentraland sells space within the world in 16 by 16 meter parcels, which buyers can combine into larger plots on which to build structures. 
According to NFT Stats, 72 virtual lots have sold on OpenSea in the last seven days at an average price of $9,700. Last June, digital real estate developers Republic Realm made history by spending nearly $1 million on a 16,000-metre lot, which they turned into a virtual shopping mall. As for if these virtual music festivals in Decentraland will ever take off, Night Terror said it's hard to say and that for now, most people are here to make money. Warnings from the UK. Japanese rebukes, Thai regulatory action, Ontario bootings and Indian probes have many wondering how the world's top crypto exchange Binance has managed to stay on top despite ejection from every country it lands in. Binance is the ethereal blockchain entity that just can't stop moving. Chief exec Chang Peng Zhao initially co-founded Binance in Hong Kong back in July 2017, alongside Chief Marketing Officer Yai He. Sadly, the exchange's Hong Kong affair disintegrated almost instantly due to potential actions from Beijing. By September 2017, just under three months into its existence, Binance had to move to greener pastures in Japan. One notable quirk was news organisations at the time continued to report Binance was headquartered in Hong Kong nearly two years after its departure. Outsourced capacity seems to be a convenient consequence of doing business as a crypto exchange. Japan, however, wasn't to be the one. After warnings from Japanese regulators, six months later, Zhao and compatriots made the executive decision to sail off to the faraway shores of Malta, or so they said. In March 2018, Bloomberg reported that Binance was headed to Malta. In fact, Malta's now disgraced former Prime Minister, Joseph Muscat, even tweeted to greet Zhao, lending some weight to the move. Zhao even virtually welcomed other crypto entrepreneurs as they entered the country. Binance signed a memorandum of understanding with the Malta Stock Exchange in September 2018, apparently cementing its relationship with the Mediterranean island nation. But by 2020, Maltese regulators made it clear that Binance, quote, is not authorised by the Maltese Financial Services Authority to operate in the cryptocurrency sphere and is therefore not subject to regulatory oversight by the MFSA. Binance had never acquired proper licensing in Malta over those two years, according to Coindesk. Amid this rather odd situation, the block in 2019 shared details of a police raid on the company's supposed Shanghai office. Zhao threatened to sue over the outlet's report, but no lawsuit ever took place. Around the same time, Binance set up a series of separate exchanges based in numerous countries and offshore tax centres, including, but not limited to, Uganda, the US, Singapore, Jersey and Turkey. Binance has since shuttered its Ugandan and Jersey entities, with the firm's Singapore operations now under investigation by local regulators. Lastly, the exchange landed in the Cayman Islands, the renowned bastion of money laundering and tax evasion. It just so happens they're also doing everything in their power to disassociate from the notorious crypto platform. In 2019, Binance listed Singapore's Small Claims Tribunal and International Arbitration Centre under its arbitration section of its flagship exchange's terms of service. Strangely, to kickstart arbitration with Binance, one had to mail Binance Europe Services Limited located in Malta. And we know how Malta feels about Binance. But in 2020, this Maltese address, where users had to send arbitration claims, was scrubbed from Binance's terms of service, being replaced by an email address. Later on, all official arbiters and addresses were silently removed altogether. As of today, all legal proceedings must now go through the Hong Kong International Arbitration Centre, according to Binance's own terms of service. Which means Binance is right back where it started, Hong Kong. The world is watching to see if the Binance cycle continues. And from one crypto company on the run to another on the chopping block. China's central bank has forced a local software company to close for good over alleged ties to crypto trading and a token called CatCoin. The People's Bank of China has ordered Beijing-based Quando Cultural Development to shut down as part of Beijing's wider crackdown on the crypto ecosystem, according to a statement. As noted by Decrypt, local reporter Colin Wu said the company had its own crypto, the name of which, translated, means CatCoin. We've so far been unable to find any market data for CatCoin, and it might be harder now since the firm's website is reportedly offline. 
The People's Bank has used the incident to urge others away from working with cryptocurrency. They said explicitly in a statement, we solemnly warn relevant institutions within our jurisdiction not to provide business premises, commercial display, marketing and paid diversion services for virtual currency related business activities. According to them, personal bank accounts should be cherished and not used to buy or sell cryptocurrency. Catcoin aside, Beijing has been on a trail banning crypto mining across the country. In June, the government cited a need to protect local investors from crypto markets and the environment. Southwest regions from Inner Mongolia to Xinjiang had served as major Bitcoin mining hubs due to abundant and cheap renewable energy. Some of the world's largest Bitcoin operations were housed there, but had to close their doors to avoid any repercussions. As a result, Bitcoin's overall hash rate has halved. Beijing had originally moved to clamp down on over-the-counter crypto trading one month earlier, forcing OTC King and former Bitcoin billionaire Zhao Dong to appear in court. Authorities had accused the Bitfinex shareholder of laundering $480 million worth of crypto for international gambling outfits. Zhao was eventually tried alongside 11 others who were allegedly part of the gambling syndicate. His expected sentence is said to equate to three years in prison. And that's your lot. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode, but we realise that there's only so much we can cover in just over 10 minutes. So if you want more of the stories that matter, check out protoss.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the Protoss podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or any other major podcast provider for more weekly roundups. We'll be back next week. See you then.